Today we're going to check out a new mechanical keyboard on the market from Tesoro. This is the Tesoro Gram Spectrum, which introduces a few different features, so I'm keen to check it out. The box is actually quite nice, I've had some of their older ones in the past, and this one seems more professional. It also has a bunch of features that we'll check out later, but the main points is that it has these agile key switches, as well as low profile keycaps. It also states that it comes in the 4 color variety of switches, but today we have the blue switches. Opening up the box, we have the keyboard itself. It did come in a plastic bag, but I played around with the keyboard before this. And underneath it is the keyboard guide, and we also get a white braided mini USB cable. And the first impression I had was on just how thin it was for a mechanical keyboard. It's almost like a standard keyboard that would come with a pre-built computer or something. But even though it looks thin, it is still quite hefty at 1.05 kilograms. So it still maintains that typical mechanical keyboard feel, mainly due to the steel top plate rather than having the usual aluminium and the fact that it's a full size keyboard with 108 keys. As for the layout of the keyboard, it's all good until we get to the bottom row. Unfortunately, it's a non-standard bottom row with different sized keys next to the spacebar. And the spacebar is smaller than usual and is a 6 unit spacebar instead of the more standard 6.25 unit bar. These odd sizes won't impact on the typing experience, but it will hinder your ability to replace keycaps or buy aftermarket keycaps. However, whether you would want to get aftermarket keycaps for this specific keyboard is a hard choice since these fit this keyboard so perfectly. As mentioned before, these use low profile keycaps, which for the most part aren't available anywhere else and wouldn't be available in custom colors anyway. But these keycaps are actually quite shallow, when we compare them to OEM keycaps, they're less than half of the height of the R4 keycap, which is the top keycap for a normal keyboard, so like the F1 key. And they are still significantly thinner than the other rows, even the R1 keycaps. One thing that keeps them quite low is that they all have the same side profile, so usually keyboards have a contoured side profile, but on this keyboard, all of the keycaps have the same profile in which is nearly flat. So they're very similar to say a low profile consumer membrane keyboard. On the side view of the keyboard, we can also see how slim the keyboard is. They've gone with the lowest profile possible by first of all having close to no incline on the case. Usually a mechanical keyboard will have a steeper inclination even without the flip up feet out. And the second thing that they did was have the mounting plate in which all the switches are on as the top surface of the keyboard. So they eliminated the need to have some sort of top shell. Although that wouldn't actually make the keyboard slimmer as the keycaps will always be above that. The steel plate has a similar look to something like a Razer X Chroma. So there's a fold at the front for more comfortable use. But then they also cut off the bottom corners as well. The steel plate is a nice clean white which has been powder coated. The finish has a slight texture to it but it looks very even and has a fine grain matte look to it. And so far there's been no problems with the durability of the finish and it also just feels superb. Although since it is white it does catch stray dirt and dust more easily but I imagine that wouldn't be much of a problem for the black version of the keyboard. Also, the branding is quite minimal and is acceptable, although I would have preferred the LED lock indicators to look a bit more neat, but that's just a small complaint. So the exterior looks great, but unfortunately on the keycaps, the typeface is just like on their old keyboards, which is very gamery. I know for most of us, it's frankly just an ugly font, which looks clunky and unprofessional, but... This is just really unfortunate because it really could have tied up the whole clean, sleek aesthetic of the keyboard, which would have easily fit into a professional work environment. As for the keycaps, they're made from ABS plastic, but a positive is that they're double shot keycaps, so this just means that the cap and the legends are different pieces of plastic put together, so the legends will never fade away or anything. And under these keycaps are the other innovation of the keyboard, they're calling these their agile key switches. So basically this is following the trend where companies are introducing key switches that are more targeted towards gamers, which mainly consist of a lower actuation and total travel distance. This is like Logitech and the Roma G's, SteelSeries and their QS1's, and Corsair and the Rapid Fires. 
The cool thing with these is that they're somewhat similar to the Corsair ones since they're using Cherry MX them so they're not completely different like Logitech's and SteelSeries but they took it one step further by introducing them in various key switch colours which isn't available with the other competitors. These switches are actually kale key switches which may be a bit difficult to see as they're using a frosted top casing and a white key stem so I imagine that the key stems are white on every version but the bottom of the casing of the switch is the appropriate colour. Unfortunately since it is at the bottom the colour can be easily seen and it does act as an accent so it doesn't look as clean and the switch is also a bit shorter. The Agile switch has an actuation distance of 1.5mm rather than the standard 2mm and the total travel distance or bottoming out distance is 3.5mm rather than 4mm. The actuation force required is 45 grams, but the click is about 55 grams, and this is specifically for the blue variant. So in theory you would be able to very slightly actuate it faster because of the cut in distance, but if you were to use the red version it would probably be also slightly faster. This potentially could make a difference in competitive gaming, but it does definitely help in repetitive actions. But Conventional blues were never meant for fast repetitive actions but for typing, so this isn't the greatest application. I would definitely say that there would be more of an effect with the linear switch like the reds. But they do feel different and it's really nice to feel something different in the market. For typing, it's a different experience and I actually like it, but it's a combination of both the switches and the keycaps. It's all just a touch more shallow, it's quite difficult to describe but it has a kind of light crispy feel to it that is unique to anything I've felt. It doesn't have a deep click feel to it but at the same time it's not hollow. They do feel like kale blues to me but just stop earlier so they're kind of scratchy and not as crisp and also not as high pitched as Cherry MX Blue switches. I think by being more shallow and bottoming out more quickly it does make it feel sharper. The keycaps themselves also have a big difference in the typing experience. This is however dependent on how good a typist you are. I'm not a very good or efficient typist so I have to move my fingers across more. So I definitely feel that the low profile keycaps do help with sliding across quite a bit in comparison to the normal taller keycaps. Overall it's satisfying to type on but I'm not so sure if that's just because it's something new and fresh or I actually really like that snappy feel and shallow travel. As for the longer keys, these use co-style wire style stabilizers, so just take a bit of caution when taking those off. And here's a quick sound test. Kale blues tend to not be as high pitched as Cherry MX blues and it's the same case here but the sound isn't as deep here and is a touch more sharp. Flipping the keyboard over we have 4 rubber feet for non-slip and 2 quite wide flip up feet which are also rubber tipped. The plastic bottom shell is very simple and plain with nothing wrong with it and on the rear of the keyboard there's the mini USB port so let's use the included white braided cable which actually has quite a bit of shine to it and turn on the keyboard. And another feature is that it has RGB lighting with the usual 16.8 million colour spectrum. And as usual RGB lighting on light 
or white surfaces doesn't bring out the depth of the colour in the lighting. A light background makes the light seem more pale than it should be, and in turn gives the illusion that it looks a bit cheap. But on a black keyboard, the colours tend to pop out more and look more vibrant. Much of the lighting can be controlled on the board by the function key and the directional arrow keys. Up and down controls the brightness, and left to right allows you to switch lighting modes in which there are 7 modes. The lighting can be further controlled via the software that you have to download off the Tesoro website. I won't go too deep into the software, but you can pretty much see it all here. We can further customise the lighting modes and the colours than what is available on the keyboard, so you can colour the keyboard to however you want. This was the only way I could get plain white backlighting, unless I missed something on the board. You can set different profiles in which you can activate on the keyboard, and that gets saved on the onboard memory rather than just on the software. Here we can also do some macro customization, which may be useful for different games, but also for work programs for function shortcuts. Opening the keyboard is quite simple with a couple of Phillips head screws on the top plate and two under some rubber feet. And it comes apart in two main pieces. The main section features the steel plate with the PCB. The steel plate counts for most of the weight and measures in at about 1.5mm thick. The PCB has quite a bit going on which is to be expected. It features a 32-bit ARM Cortex processor with 512KB of onboard memory for the profiles with custom macros and stuff. It does feature full N key rollover and 6 key rollover in which you can switch between. For each switch, we can see three blue protrusions coming through the PCB. There's the normal large one for the positioning, but then we also have these two little other prongs, which usually would only be for PCB mounted key switches. We also see that there's SMD LED lighting, so being surface mounted, they went for the translucent switch casing, so the light can shine through it. The plastic bottom shell is very slim and light, and features just a bit of reinforcement, but it's held together by the sturdy steel plate anyway, so that's no problem. The screw bosses are reinforced as well, and it also features what I assume is some sort of anti-static thing, but the bottom shell is plastic, so I'm not too sure what it is. If anyone knows, please do comment. And taking this switch out, we can see how small it is, and comparing it to a standard Cherry MX Blue switch, I knew that it was shorter, but I actually was surprised that it was also smaller in length and width. So I couldn't actually put the Cherry MX key switch onto the keyboard, so if you had to replace the switch, then the Agile ones would be the only option. Although since they are smaller, they can fit into a standard hole on a normal keyboard, but they'll only be held in by the solder joints. Opening up the switches, we can see how they pretty much just shrunk down everything, just a bit. So the parts don't seem to be interchangeable with the normal ones. So overall, the keyboard does suffer in terms of incompatibility and modularity, even though it maintains a Cherry MX key stem. So all up, it's definitely an innovative product which I completely support. In such a refined market, it's always refreshing to see companies to push forward and offer something different to the norm. The quality of the enclosure feels very well made with the steel plate and the keycaps are ABS but are double shot which is good although they're let down by the typeface on them. Other than the font, the keyboard as a whole looks aesthetically clean, in which doesn't seem to show very well on video. I saw other videos before I got my hands on it, and I was generally surprised on how it looked and how it felt. The key switches are KL key switches, so they're modified Chinese switches that are based on the German-made Cherry MX line, so quality and tolerances are generally a touch looser, but there's nothing to back that up with these newly modified key switches. 
and these blue switches do feel great in my opinion with a unique light and snappy feel to them. I like most of the keyboard but it's held back by the font which I really think does make a huge difference for the looks of it and also the lack of customizability with most of the features being somewhat proprietary. I would also love to see this in maybe a 10 keyless form factor as in the end this is a gaming oriented keyboard with those types of key switches and many don't require that numpad plus it'll also look cool. But lastly, innovation comes at a price, and traditionally it is quite expensive for a keyboard that uses KL key switches, so if these features aren't for you, then absolutely go with something else in their line probably, that would probably be cheaper as well. But I think this is a great keyboard from Tesoro, and it offers something different in the market, and is the best board that they have to offer.